Howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner, brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Well, I suppose a lot of you boys and girls who are listening have already sent in to Lum and Abner for your flashlights. Maybe some of you haven't done it yet, though. I'd do that right away if I were you. Just think what a lot of fun you could have with this dandy little flashlight. It's the same size as a fountain pen, you know. You could carry it around with you wherever you go. And powerful. Say, it throws out a great big beam of light. Now, here's how to get a flashlight. Take the outside wrapper, not the label from the bottle, but the outside wrapper from a package of Horlick's malted milk powder. Must be from a package of Horlick's malted milk powder. You can't use wrappers from Horlick's tablets. Well, write your name and address on the back of that wrapper and enclose 10 cents. That's to cover the cost of packing and mailing your flashlight. Then mail your wrapper and dime to Lum and Abner, care of the station that you are listening to right now. Isn't that easy? You bet it is, and that's all you have to do to get this dandy little flashlight complete with bulb and battery. Now send in for your flashlight right away, boys and girls. Do it tonight. If Mother hasn't a package of Horlick's malted milk powder in the house now, she'll get you one from the drugstore, I know. She knows that Horlick's will help you to grow up big and strong. Well, don't forget now, boys and girls. Send in to Lum and Abner for your flashlight right away. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, when we left our old friends yesterday, Lum had been arrested and placed in jail, charged with robbing Abner's house. The whole town had turned against him so that he was unable to make bond for his release. In fact, late yesterday evening, a committee called on him at the jail and asked for his resignation as president of the school board. Well, things are looking a little brighter today. Evidently, somebody has come to Lum's rescue. For as we look in on Pine Ridge now, we find him just entering Dick Huddleston's store. Listen. Well, howdy, Lum. Howdy. Glad to see you yeah, out. Yeah, glad to see myself <laughs> out, too, I guess. Come in. Come in. Uh, just wanted to come over and tell you how I appreciate you going my bail, Dick. Oh, well, now, that's all right, Lum. I was glad to do it. Uh, just sorry that I didn't do it sooner, but... I didn't know the straight of it till a while ago. Abner was over here and told me the truth about it. Told you that tr- he told you how come he to slip in his house the other night? Well, no, but he told me that you never broke in, though. Said that he left the kitchen door open himself so that you could get in. Well, now, I told him not to tell nobody about that. If Elizabeth finds out he was mixed up in that, no telling what she will do. Oh, well, I promised him that I wouldn't say anything about it, I still can't understand, though, why he wanted you to get that check that the insurance company paid him without his wife finding it out. Well, we were feared she'd take it into the county seat and cash it. And they could get Abner for obtaining false money under pretenses. What are you talking about? Well, I reckon I may as well tell you the whole story. Now you know this much, you may as well know it all. <laughs> but don't never breathe it to a soul, Dick, for it, it just wouldn't do for Elizabeth to find out. Oh, about no, it. no, I won't say anything about it, sure. Well, uh, the whole thing started when we opened up our matrimonial bureau. We never had no pictures of men folks to send out, and these women folks was writing in wanting us to find them a husband, so just to sort of pacify them till we could do better, we sent out a batch of pictures of that. Yeah, yeah, I knew about that one. Yeah, well, uh, this one woman, Hortense Kelly, uh, fell in love with Abner's picture and decided to come down here to see him. Yeah, I know. She came in on the same train that uh, Abner's wife and daughter did. Yeah, yeah, and right there's when the trouble started, right there. It is. Elizabeth seen Hortense run up and kiss Abner down there at the depot, and she figured Abner was having an affair and refused to let him come home. Yeah, but uh, she got uh, in a good humor again, though, after he had that automobile accident, <laughs> I guess you felt sorry for him. <laughs> well, now, I'll tell you the truth, Dick. That accident was a fake. A fake? Abner's arms ain't no more broke than mine is right now. Him and me just made out like he was hurt to get Elizabeth back in a good humor. <laughs> well, it worked all right. <laughs> yeah, it was working fine up to the time Elizabeth found that accident policy and put in a claim for damages unbeknownst to Abner and then got that check for $200. Oh, I see now why you were so anxious to get that check back. Why, sure, if they'd have cashed that check, they could have got Abner for collecting damages on an accident that he never even had. That's right. That's yeah. a penitentiary old thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good thing you got that check back all right, Mom. Well, I've got it now, but I don't know what in the world to do with it. I aim to carry it back into the county seat and give it back to the insurance company, but, below me, I can't do that without explaining to them why Abner don't want it. No, no, they'd more than like to tell Abner's wife then. Why, well, sure they would. That's the reason I had to go ahead and let them lock me up. I couldn't tell nobody the truth about it. No. I didn't want Abner to get in no trouble at home. You know how high-strung Elizabeth is. Hell no, no. It wouldn't do to tell her now, though. 
course, if, if we can send out enough of them flashlights to where we can make uh, enough to restock our jot down store and get that opened up again, we can tell Elizabeth the truth about the whole thing. Yeah, well, of course, that's the first thing you've got to do. And say, the way this mail's coming in here today, well, you fellas won't have any trouble doing that, neither, Lon. Sure enough. Now, this is the biggest day you've had yet. Well, fine, good. Just look at that pile of mail over there, thousands of them. Well, for the land, <laughs> them flashlights are making a big hit, all right. Yeah, yeah, they are. Uh, say, I got the one that you sent me, Lon. Oh, you got it, huh? Yeah, I meant to let me on it to you. Handiest thing as I ever had, too. You know, I used to have to carry a lantern home with me every night after I closed up here, but... Oh, this flashlight works a heap better. Oh, my, yeah, handy. You know, that thing will throw out about twice as much light as you'd think it would. Oh, yeah, them powerful little gadgets. And, of course, the nice part about them is that you can just carry them in your pocket like you would a fountain pen, no bother at all. Yeah, well, I bound you folks that's already got theirs has been showing them around to their friends, and that's more than likely the reason we're getting so many more requests for them now than we did when we first started making the offer. Yeah. Folks is beginning to find out what a nice gift it really is. Yeah, yeah, and then I think that there's a lot of people out on the party line that are interested in this contest, too, Lum. See which one of you is going to be elected president of your new store over there. <laughs> yeah, well, that was a mistake, me ever agreeing to such a thing as that. So far, I ain't got but two votes out of the thousands of letters we got. <laughs> and one of them votes I sent in myself. <laughs> well, Abner started running away with it, all right. <laughs> yeah, me getting in that trouble and getting locked up in jail ain't going to help me none. I no, know that. No, it isn't. You know, them things get talked around. Of course, they don't know the straight of it. No, yeah, it'll hurt you, all right. No doubt about that, Lum. That's what I hate about it. The whole thing, Dick, more than anything else. Some of my best friends has turned against me. Yeah. I reckon you heard about them asking me to resign as president of the school board yesterday. Yeah, I did. I, I hate to hear that, too, Lum. I sure did. Well, I didn't know what to do. I couldn't explain things to them without getting Abner into batcher trouble, so no. I just went ahead and resigned. Well, I think so, Lum, when this whole thing is straightened out and... Everybody knows the truth about it. Well, it's more likely they'll come to you and want you to take the office back. Mm, well, I hope so. If I could just get to be president of the Jotham Down store, I wouldn't mind it so bad, but I, I hate to lose every office I've got. Well, Lum, you're not working for it like Abner is. Here, while you've been locked up in jail over there, why, he's been out making a house-to-house canvas listing boats around here. He has? Yeah, goes around with his arms wrapped up in splints <laughs> In a slang, in a way. <laughs> Naturally, they'll vote for him. Feel yeah, sorry, you know. I <laughs> see now. Yeah. I told him the other day he, he could take his arms out of them sprints that I believe they'd be getting well by now if they were showing up hurt. Yeah. I noticed he never appeared very anxious to do it. <laughs> yeah, I see now. He wanted to keep them wrapped up so as to get all the sympathy he could. <laughs> well, that's about the reason, all right. <laughs> well, I ain't give up. I grannies, I've been sort of taking things easy, but if that's the way he wants to do, I'll get busy myself. Undoubtedly, I've got some friends out on the party line. Why, sure. If I was you, I'd call them up and ask them to vote for me, too, Lon. Yeah. You, you reckon they're all down on me on account of this trouble I got myself into? Well, I, I just wouldn't say anything about that at all. Don't mention it. Dick, it just wouldn't do for Abner to get that office. He's a good man at heart, but he just ain't qualified for it. He's all right if he's got somebody to tell him what to do, but he don't know how to figure things out for himself. And give him a little authority, and there ain't no living with him. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm staying out of it, Lum. You're both friends of mine. I don't want to take sides. Well, Dick, if you don't mind me using your telephone, I would love to call up the folks on the party line and remind them that I'm still in the race. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Help yourself. Let them know that I'd appreciate it if they'd vote for me. Sure. Let's see. Yeah. I believe I'll just ring Doc Miller's ring for a change. That gets them all over the telephone. <laughs> it appears they're getting suspicious of that fire alarm ring. We've used that so much here lately. <laughs> Yeah, they'll all listen in when they hear the doctor's ring all right now. <laughs> See who's took down sick, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll always do myself. Yeah, sure. I, I can good. hear them snatching them receivers off in the hooker ring. <laughs> well, go ahead, then. Go ahead. Wait, well, yeah, I want to be sure they're all listening in. Well, they'll be hanging up on you there in a minute, you yeah, know what? That's right. Just a minute. <clears throat> Howdy, everybody. This is uh, Lum Edwards talking. I just want to take this opportunity to thank all you folks that sent in for the flashlights we're giving away. It's, it's mighty nice to know that we've got so many friends out on the party line, and we want every last one of you to have one of these gifts. For It's something we know you'll all appreciate. So if you ain't sent in for, uh, yet for a flashlight, be sure and do it tomorrow. It'll be a big help to me and Abner, and we'll appreciate it, too. Now, I just want to put in a good word for myself while I'm on my feet. Y- you know, we're letting you folks that send in for the flashlights decide which one of us is going to be president of our jot em down store when we get it opened up. So, uh, natural, I'd love to get just as many votes as I can. And when you send in a ropper from a package of Horlicks, 
Just write on the back of it which one of us you're voting for. You know, my name is Lum. L-U-M. L as in Lum, and U as in Lum, and... M as in love. Well, howdy, Abner. Come in, uh, come in. Wait just a minute. I don't need this. I've been all over town today getting votes. Abner, I'm trying to make oh. announcement on the party line. Oh, here. Be well, quiet. I've never seen you. Excuse me. <laughs> Go ahead, Lum. i never seen him. Yet. Well, I reckon that's about all, except that I want you to know I appreciate you voting for me. And we'll be looking for your letter. Thank you. Oh, that's what you're up to, huh? Trying to get votes behind my back. Yeah. Well, what you been doing? Uh-huh. Going around here making a house-to-house canvas. Of course I was asking for votes. I grant I'm going to keep on asking for them, too. I ain't had much to say in this contest so far. But from here out, Abner, I'm after every vote I can get. I'll show you that I ain't through yet. <laughs> well, it looks as though this race for president might develop into some real competition. <laughs> Come on, folks, cast a vote for either Lum or Abner in this race for president of the Jotham Down General Store. And get a fine flashlight at the same time. Haven't you often wished when you were hunting for something in a dark closet? Or maybe it was when you were out in your automobile that you had a flashlight with you? Well, here's a fine chance to get a handsome little flashlight. A flashlight about the size of a fountain pen, and which has a fountain pen clip, so that you can carry it around in a coat or vest pocket if you want to. A compact but powerful, really useful little flashlight. Just send in the outside wrapper from a package of Horlicks malted milk powder. Maybe from any size, either natural or chocolate flavor, but it must be from a package of Horlicks malted milk powder. Wrappers from Horlicks tablets, I mean, are not eligible. Write your name and address on the back of this wrapper and enclose 10 cents to cover packing and mailing costs. Then mail your wrapper and dime to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are listening. Send in for one of these handy little flashlights. Tonight, you'll be showing Lum and Abner that you are one of their loyal listeners. This is Carlton Brickert, speaking for Lum and Abner and Harley, who now bid you all good night and good health.